I think it's only natural for most people. And I and I really wonder, as you were talking, how many people even conceive of the fact that love is not just about taking. Because I think most people, certainly if they are not living a spiritual life, but often even if they are, in relationships and in friendships, of course, of course, the place they go to is, what am I getting out of this? What will I get out of this? How do I feel? How does this person make me feel? How do they make me happy? It's, Which, by the way, is, is a necessary part of any well, relationship. Well, it's a natural part. But also necessary, mm -hmm. right? Also necessary. But I think what, what you're saying, what you're bringing to the point, which is so important, that for a relationship to be a true relationship, for a relationship to be one that can grow, there has to be a shift that occurs at some point in the relationship, where hopefully both, but certainly if we are talking to ourselves, we ask ourselves the question, how much is my giving a priority in this relationship? Right. The emphasis has to change, for sure. Right. And that has to be a conscious choice. Um, and by the way, a conscious choice that is made again and again and again. Because, and this is something, again, fundamental to spirituality, to understand that we we have two natures within us. One that is truly our nature, call it our soul, that really desires your good somebody else's goodness outside of ourselves. But there is what we call the body consciousness or the ego, which is just for me. Just for me. And that is not something that can be switched on and off. That is a constant lifelong struggle, battle, however you want to phrase it. So that unless you are in any relationship that is important to you, whether it's a romantic one, whether it's a friendship, it is important to always be asking yourself the question, how much is my giving nature involved in this relationship? Because if it's not, if it's not, that relationship will not last. That relationship will not last. Well, I think it's so interesting too, because when you think about what makes people compatible, right? Again, it's usually rooted in the five senses. We like to hike. We we enjoy the same films. We have the same sense of humor. Um, we love travel. We love food, foodies, whatever it is, right? And I think that again, that is important and that is fun, but there needs to be something that we understand true compa compatibility to be. It's who the person is and how they show up in the darkest of times. And that's really how you know you're compatible. And people don't actually go into relationships thinking that way. You're not thinking about the bad times or the difficulties or, or the um, challenges that will naturally occur in life. And how will that partner fare for you? Or how will you show up for them in that time? And when you go through those experiences with somebody and they show up, really show up for you, and you show up either as your best self or your worst self, that is really if you're truly compatible. And that also happens to be what true unconditional love is. <laughs>